Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be talking about domain 3 that is design data storage solutions. So let's get into the video. Okay guys, now this particular discussion will be emphasized on the designing of the storage, right? So we will be talking about the storage account, your data lake, data bricks architecture that we talked about, right? So what are the things that we will be using? All right. Now this particular part includes your designing the data storage solution for relational data and designing the data solution for non-relational data and designing your data integration. So we're going to talk about database, your storage account and the other integrated data services. Now designing a storage solution for relational database. Now the question is that you are designing an SQL database solution and the solution will include 20 databases that will be 20 GB each and have varying usage pattern over here and you need to recommend a database platform to host databases and the solution must meet the following requirement guys you have to have an uptime of 99.99 percent and your compute resources allocated to the databases must scale dynamically okay and the solution must have reserved capacity right and your compute charge must be minimized over here what should you include in the recommendation your choices are an elastic pool contains 20 azure sql databases okay your 20 databases on an sql server so just like your vm that is your sql server and inside which you will have 20 databases installed by putting multiple disk and those vms that you will be using in availability set so you will not have a single machine like that you will have multiple machines in the different availability set and your 20 databases in ms sql server that run on azure virtual machine over here or your 20 instances of sql database serverless so if you are on the azure portal you can also navigate to that particular option in the elastic pool and check what are the choices available so people who have created the databases will be able to answer this particular question guys guys what is the answer okay guys let's see the answer over here the answer is A guys, an elastic pool that contains 20 Azure SQL databases. Guys, always remember, if you are going with the serverless, right? Serverless compute capacity that you will have, you won't be able to reserve the compute over there. Serverless will be a requirement where you are not aware about the capacity and you would like to scale it on the later stage. So serverless will be a requirement. Let's say I'm not aware about the compute functionality and I have to check my application and then decide that gradually I would like to increase, right? And that particular benefit you will be getting in your general purpose option only not in hyperscale not in business critical so another demand what it says that it will be able to dynamically able to scale over here right and the solution must have reserve capacity so if you are going serverless right that will not be a choice i hope it makes sense right so this will be your azure managed 20 sql databases over here and the compute storage redundancy is built for the business critical databases and the elastic pool with the SLA of 99.99%. So the choice that you will be selecting is business critical because you required 99.99% of the SLA, but Microsoft has not given that particular option that you should selecting business critical. So the moment you will eliminate, the only choice you will find is fruitful is the first one over here. Clear? So it is just the explanation of a database, but you can also eliminate the other options as well. So you can think from both the perspective guys. Now another question guys. You have 100 server that run on Windows Server 2012 R2 and host Microsoft SQL Server 2014 instances. So your instances host database that have following characteristics over here. Now what are those guys? The stored procedures are implemented by using CLR. What are guys stored procedure? Pre-compile statement. Right? Or you can also mention that it will be mostly used for the relational databases services, right? Where you would like to use particular functionality. Okay. Now the latest database is currently 3 TB. None of the database will ever exceed 4 TB over here. You need to recommend a service to host the databases. The solution must meet the following requirement over here. Now what are the requirements? Whenever possible, minimize the management overhead for migrated databases. Okay. Ensure that the users can authenticate by using Azure Active Directory authentication credential, right? So your Azure Active Directory authentication 
username and the password will be used to log in and minimize the number of the databases changes required to facilitate the migration over here okay so what should you include in the recommendation your azure sql database elastic pool your azure sql manage instances your azure sql single databases or sql server 2016 on azure vm that you will be installing this particular database inside a vm v is the correct answer over here and your azure sql manage instances allows sql server customers to lift and shift their on-premises application to the cloud with minimal application and the database changes uh, and at the same time your sql manage instances preserves all pass capabilities as well right so this actually help us to manage our costing and for the hybrid model over here for the migration guys any confusion on this one i hope this question was crystal clear the moment it as per the requirement it was you won't be able to use sql server itself it is windows server 12 rt that they have mentioned directly so definitely guys the option a was out of the picture option c was out of the picture and it also need to use azure active directory authentication that you will have so if you will be using your sql server 2016 on azure vms and then putting the databases then you have to promote that machine on a domain and it requires further complexity and it will also you know not be a fruitful choice that you will be using for the migration so your answer will be b over here clear to all okay guys proceeding further you are planning an azure iot hub solution that includes 5000 iot devices okay now each device will stream data including temperature or device id and time data so what kind of the logs it will be generating you can think guys so approximately 5000 records will be written every second and the data will be visualized near real time over here so you need to recommend a service to store a query the data over here and there are two services can you recommend and each correct answer presents a complete solution over here your first choice is your azure table storage your second choice is the event grid the third choice your cosmos db sql api and your azure time series insight over here okay guys let's see the explanation now absolutely guys it will be c and d yeah so most of you are correct guys over here that using the iot devices so guys time series is nothing that is an iot device feature guys over here that it will allow you to analyze billions of the requests so that is a monitoring service that you use and definitely guys in order to keep such a high amount of the database you know incoming request over here so you required a high database capacity for that right which will be able to handle and whenever you will be using the cosmos db the only thing that you select is the performance that is are you per second request unit per second over there table won't be a choice because table will be semi-structured and here the table will be used for the lesser amount of the storage over here not with that particular high much high capacity event grid anyways will not be the choice because event grid will be helping you for the event driven mechanism not to store the data over here right if there would be an option of event hub where you will have hundreds and thousands of the requests need to be stored that could have been the possibility a choice but event grid is your serverless mechanism so event grid is out of the picture table is out of the picture over here okay guys proceeding further guys are we clear with this particular option let's see the explanation over here so let's say if you are using a cosmos db it will give you the capability you can use any choice of your api over here right that you will be able to use and in order to track those events you required a mechanism that which particular event is getting generated at what duration of time over here so for that particular service you required your azure time series insight and definitely for any choice of your api that will be your cosmos db that you will be able to use for that so guys you can go for module 6 over here in the cloud k2n academy portal and you can attempt some of the questions over there as well okay now guys further questions now this will be for non-relational database that we will be using over here so let's see guys you have an azure subscription and your azure has a blob container that contains multiple blob and 10 user in the finance department of your company plans to access that particular blobs during the month of april and you need to recommend a solution to enable access to the blob during the month of april only so which security solution will you recommend in the storage account your saas based token your conditional access policy certificates and access yeah 
Okay, guys. I hope this was an easy one for everyone because there it is time bound accessibility that you have to provide over here. So answer is A. Absolutely, guys. The SAS token. Because if you have created a SAS token, you must have seen it does give you the option to pick the time duration that you know this particular token that will be generated and what will be the requirement on that. So you can create this particular SAS token for that particular duration. Absolutely correct. Another question, guys. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure blob storage account named Store One. And here that you have an on premises file server name, Server One, that runs on Windows Server 2016. So you have a machine through which you have created your file server, right, on on premises and store 500 GB of company's file over here. You need to store a copy of a files from Server One in Storage One. Which two possible Azure services archive this goal over here so the correct answer present a complete solution your azure logic app integration account or your azure import and export job over here azure data factory and azure analysis service on on-premises data gateway this is a tricky one guys guys which two possible azure services two services guys or your azure batch account that is also in the option guys okay guys let's see the answers Absolutely guys, it is BNC that important export jobs that you will have and the C that your Azure data factory which will help you importing the data. Now what is the data factory guys what we talked about? It is a ETL service that is your extract transformation and load, right? So this will be able to periodically load the data with the help of the export and import service and guys if you create one this is how this particular job looks like over here, right? So the answer is BNC only guys now this particular part we have already have a discussion that if you will be migrating a lot of data what are the choices available so we had a discussion now if this question would have been presented in that manner that it's an offline data transfer then the data boxes will be included in the option now in the data boxes guys i hope you can recall we talk about your data box disk data box heavy data box categories and the data box gateway and the data box edge was the online option so that is not available because these are not offline data transfer or online data transfer you want to import the data periodically right now if they would have kept a service called file sync service that could have been the choice as well but that was not included in the option remember that practical that we did for the file sync service so the answer is your import and export jobs that you will be using and your azure data factory okay and you can go to your module 5 and domain 3.2 and you can attempt such questions over here and you can do some demos which are available so guys, I hope you really liked our session and if you have any kinds of doubts, you can please comment down below and our team will reach out to you and do not forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you are really intrigued by the kind of terms used and you want to learn more about it, then we have something really, really special for you. We have this free class on Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect certification that is AZ305. And if you want to learn more about it, then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. In this session, in this free class, you'll be learning about why you should be learning Azure Cloud, your paths to learn Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification. You'll be getting to know the difference between AZ303, AZ304, AZ305, and a lot many insightful things. So if you want to do this, then all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. After that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now and select your availability according to the event date mentioned. Add your name, add your phone number, add your email, and every detail will be conversed to you via our mail. And after that, just proceed ahead. On the extreme light, you'll be seeing this kind of link. So just Copy this link, save it to your calendars, and I will see you in the next class. Till then, take care and keep hustling.